Cyclops, and I'm going to talk about Superman number one. It's another reboot from DC, which, you know, not been a fan of, but Dawn of DC, Joshua Williamson, Jamal Campbell, whatever they're doing here, this actually works. This is actually a really nice place to start. We'll see how things go. Uh, yeah, it's called Voices in Your Head, uh, Joshua Williamson. I think... Um, Campbell's art, which I'm new to, is actually quite interesting. Um, starts with a little live wire action sequence pretty early on in the book. And you can see, again, I talk a lot about the use of primary colors and getting away from like the uh, use of pastels. And it's, it's done really quite well in this book. I think for the most part, they really handle the concept of Superman history, Superman legacy, the, the history of Clark and Lois and the Metropolis and different villains and things like that are done well. And here we have Jimmy, and this is the version of Clark, how they have him kind of like modern nerd. Like it's different now with the type of khakis, wears a small little cap. It's a different type of approach to kind of hiding his nerdiness than some of the stuff they've used before. I thought it worked pretty good. Lois is in charge of the, the Daily Planet right now. They have a sabbatical moment, so we don't have to get into a lot of history. We don't have to get into a whole bunch of narrative and blah, 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 or anything like that. And she just basically is trying to be like Perry, I think, more than anything else. I don't think she really is Perry. It's funny how there's some jib and jabs. I don't know that I cared for the way they did uh, Clark's inner dialogue, Superman's inner dialogue at times. I think some of that was a little clunky, but it's okay. It was fine. Uh, but this was really a powerful moment with him thinking about how many lives he could save in just a few seconds. So that was really pretty good. And the story moves very quickly through some different imagery that kind of shows you the world that he's in, like they're, they're tying this into other stuff. They're not going to like back away from John Kent or Val Zod, some different things that have gone on with Supergirl or anything like that. So let's not, let's not pretend that this is some sort of like major reboot and like crisis thing. It's not, it's not like that at all. And they basically still have Lois and Clark together. It's very sweet moments before he has to jump into action as Superman again, which I, again, I thought was actually, you know, done quite well. And you have uh, some bold moves, I think, with some of the art and the designs of the things where he's, there's just, there's something happened over at the Lex building. When he gets there, he's seen all these things. There. You can see the circle in the middle of how it's transformed. And basically, there's like a Superman symbol on top. And you have this, uh, this person that works for Lex basically saying, Lex is in prison. And it's now the Superman building. It's now Superman Court. So they're turning Superman into the brand. And it, it, there's some back and forth with her name is Mercy, Mercy Graves. And it's like, I'm not going to be bought and paid for. Luther can't do this. But it doesn't really, it doesn't really stop. And he used, Lex uses some sort of imagery, kind of like a Jor-El type thing, which infuriates Superman. And you can see it is part of the scheme. It's not, we're not going to pretend that Lex is a good guy here. Obviously, Mercy's calling him, yeah, he's on your way. Uh, it, and it's like, it, um... Yeah, he won't make it. Basically, Lex says he won't make it to me, and it's all set, it's all kind of a setup because you have Parasite. And this version of Parasite is really different. Um, Superman's engaged right away before he's basically kind of overwhelmed and kind of taken over, and you're kind of like left to kind of like what's going to happen next. And I think it was done quite well. I think there was enough action, enough setup, some discussion of history and context. It's enough of what you would need to enjoy getting into Superman. And I think that is the direction that DC needs to go. They need to find ways to reboot the classic characters in a manner, stop rebooting the numbers, stop rebooting this, you know, the whole series, just, you know, dig in. We're in, we're all in. Get Williamson locked into a, you know, one year, two year plan, something, at least get it some longevity with the writers and, and artists together because we can't have art for four or five issues and then have everything radically changed, whether it be the character designs, whether it be the way they talk, the way they act, the way they're drawn. Just all of it needs to work pretty well together. So this was actually quite good. Uh, again, hat tip to Wakazashi's Tea House. He praised it. There's a couple others that did. But obviously, I, I'm a big fan of Gray's work and definitely go over there and check out some of his other stuff. He's usually ahead of me on some of these newer books. This one I actually able to grab because of his recommendation. I would say that my biggest critique is I don't quite understand why we're doing Team 13. Why are we doing Team 13 for Superman? Don't we, shouldn't we be able to do 9? Shouldn't we be able to keep Superman clean enough? I don't know why. This would not be inappropriate for a 9-year-old. This, this book was fine. Can't we stay at this level 
we don't have to have cursing we don't have to have it have, have go too far with innuendo and stuff like we can have a nice gateway comic book to the number one hero that's in your universe and then kind of go out from there towards mature content like we can kind of grow up in the dcu and tie it to some of your other media whether it be tv and movies so you have stuff that's for littler kids and they can grow into stuff that can be more for mature audiences this is kind of what we all grew up on. I don't know why we can't get back there. I don't understand why action adventures, uh, the Superman books weren't the gateway drug. And then, yeah, there were Vertigo titles. Yes, there was Grant Morrison stuff that was for mature. I got to be honest, it wasn't even as much about just content. It was also about just like understanding it. Like you just had to be older. You just had to have a certain type of vocabulary and interest. It wasn't just about exposure to, you know, mature content. I don't know exactly where they're going to go with the story. I would say it's at least a good start. And that's why I wanted to share the video with you guys today. Thank you so much for listening. I am Pops. Yeah. <laughs>